Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today the question is, what is the probability that any given marriage will result in divorce? We think of this as the divorce statistic, and for many years now we have thought of it as 50%. There's a 50% probability that if a couple gets married, eventually that'll end in divorce. And there's been a lot of information lately about debunking the myth of this 50% divorce statistic, suggesting that the divorce rate has actually dropped, or more accurately, the probability that a marriage will end in a divorce has actually dropped. And this really typifies the problem. We don't know if a marriage will end up in a divorce if that marriage is ongoing. What we can track is the divorce rate. How many people in a given time period get divorced? Which of course is dependent on the proportion of people that gets married. So this can become fairly confusing fairly quickly. So let's first start with the idea of the 50% divorce statistic that we hear so much. We have fairly good evidence that this was true back in the 70s and in certain years in the early 80s. So we have good evidence that at one time this was true, which means that the burden of proof here would be to dispute this 50% statistic. So that is, the 50% statistic is reliable. It was at least for that period. And we think of it as reliable moving forward unless new evidence contradicts it. And we have this rise in this myth debunking, uh, claims that the divorce rate has dropped, but I'm not sure there's enough evidence to say that yet. There are a lot of sources that suggest the divorce rate hasn't changed at all, and there's some sources that suggest the divorce rate has. But again, divorce rate is different than the probability that a marriage will end in divorce. I think it's too early to declare victory over divorces in our society. Divorces, really, the, the divorce rate might have changed, but the probability of being divorced overall, we don't really know if that's changed. There's a lot of people debunking myths, and that seems like a strong position. That's a fairly confident position to say, oh, there's a myth, and let's talk about how that 50% statistic is no longer true. I think it's too early to say that. There is evidence, though, that education and income can predict a divorce better than other categorical variables. That does seem to be true. And what may be happening is that with more people getting an education, college degree, and that being associated with a lower divorce rate, that explains this probability drop, if it's in fact true. That could explain it but there's still a large number of people who do not have a college education and would in theory be subject to that same risk, that same 50% risk. So it could be that the probability of being divorced is dropping among certain groups and not dropping overall. So what do we know for sure when it comes to these divorce statistics? Really not a lot, but if you look at our best evidence, it would suggest that the probability that a first marriage result in divorce is somewhere near 40 to 42 percent, right? Somewhere in that area. So there's evidence here that people being married later in life, people waiting longer to, to be married, that lowers the probability as well. So let's look at that. We know that more education is associated with lower risk of divorce. We know also that getting married later is associated with a lower risk of divorce and having children is associated with a lower risk of divorce. So when looking at this getting married later theory, this says that getting married later lowers the probability of divorce. That does appear to be true. But it also suggests, many times anyway, that the cause is more maturity. So somebody's more mature, they're older, when they get married, they're not as likely to get divorced. So with the assertion that people that wait longer to get married have a lower probability of divorce, we would look at second marriages and probably think that the 
probability of getting divorced would decrease on a second marriage. Actually, it increases to about 60%. Now, that may seem contradictory to the evidence that suggests that people that get married later have a lower chance of divorce, but it's not necessarily. It's just an interesting statistic because it's going in a different direction than we may think. And when we look at the third marriages, again, we may say, well, if somebody's been married twice before, they've learned a few things about getting along with other people or selecting a person who's a better match for them. So perhaps the probability of being divorced would drop it actually increases to 73%. So we've moved from around 40 to 42% from first marriage to around 60% for second marriage up to around 73% chance of getting divorced for a third marriage. And again, the average age of getting married would increase with second marriage as compared to first marriage and with third marriage as compared to second marriage. So we have a lot of interesting statistics moving in a lot of unexpected directions when it comes to divorce. So the probability of getting divorced overall is high. And there are some factors that make the risks even greater. As I mentioned, there's some factors that decrease the risk as well, but let's look at the ones that make it greater. Living together before marriage is actually associated with an increased risk of getting divorced. And if one or both of the people in a marriage have a mental health disorder, particularly depression, substance use, post-traumatic stress disorder, and ADHD, that increases the risk of divorce as well. Now again, it's important to keep in mind with all these statistics, this isn't about causality. Having a mental health disorder or not having one doesn't cause somebody to stay married or cause somebody to be divorced. These are just factors that are associated with a movement in the probability of becoming divorced. So with all these differing divorce statistics, it can become difficult to figure out what the true probability of divorce is. But what we know is that divorce is complex. There are a lot of factors involved in maintaining a marriage and in dissolving a marriage. And there's no one variable that we can isolate and say, this is the solution. Moving this variable is the solution to staying married and avoiding divorce. We just don't know. It's a very complicated situation. As research continues in this area, we hope to have a clearer picture of what's really going on. So to answer the question originally, we just don't know, but I would say the divorce statistic of 50%, I know this has been held out as a myth, but I don't think there's enough evidence to say that's not true. And either way, the probability of getting divorced is a lot higher than we would like to see. People go into marriage expecting to stay married, and that's not what is happening for 40 to 50% of people. I hope you found this description of the divorce statistic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.